Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're all staying safe out there in these crazy, crazy times. Thought I'd pop in and brighten your day with a review of the new Transformer Cyberverse Deluxe Class Hot Rod. Because we all know, even a global pandemic can't stand up to the joy of receiving a new plastic robot. Priorities, people. Priorities. So Hot Rod is the first new figure in the second wave of the McAdam, I guess, overall wave. He's paired along with Grimlock, who gets shrunk down a little bit to become a deluxe-sized figure also. And if you guys aren't familiar with these, the deluxe Cyberverse figures are, uh, you know, a higher quality, higher posability, higher parts count, uh, counterpart to like the warrior class toys for Cyberverse, just something aimed at older kids or collectors. And they follow the Build-A-Figure MO that the Marvel Legends line does, which, you know, they're also made by Hasbro. So, you know, Build-A-Figure, TM. Now, if you've seen any of my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toys packaging, both front and back, all the different sides. We'll open it up. We'll see the instructions. Um, in this case, we'll take a look at the new Build-A-Figure part real quick, and then we'll see Hot Rod himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. I'll be doing some comparisons, group shots today, and then at the end, I'll give my final thoughts. So Hot Rod here is kind of offset in a somewhat weird way. They're hiding part of his body, which I'm not real crazy about. You can see his flame effects right here, which once I get them out, I'll be able to tell if they're compatible with other figures or not. Some of the fire blast effects like bumblebees only work with that figure, so we'll see. You can see McAdam's leg right here. You got the new, you know... Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures branding that they have going on. But honestly, I just refuse to call it that. In fact, in the final season, Bumblebee's not even that big of a part. Interestingly, Hot Rod actually takes center stage for a good chunk of the season. And great character development, by the way, because when he was first introduced in the show, I thought he was the most annoying, shrill character they had. I mean, he was like a total Kyle. But he underwent the classic Hot Rod character arc where he matures, becomes a leader figure. Doesn't become a prime in this continuity, but, you know, he is he becomes much more likable as time goes on. But anyway, back to talk about the toy. So you can see here, he's got the classic colors down, the red, orange, some yellow flames, all that stuff. And uh, lacking in the paint department, we'll take a look at that in a sec. Here you got the picture of McAdam in full, so you can see what the entire building figure looks like. And then here we've got Hot Rod's renders, vehicle and robot modes. Cool picture of him doing his fusion flame attack. Layout of the toys that are released for the McAdam assortment. Uh, so you got him and Grimlock here, and then we're going to get RC and Thunder Howl later. Hopefully within the next month or two. I, I hope they don't make us wait till the end of the year like they're kind of claiming. And now what I was saying about the paint apps, uh, you can see that right here on his like upper thighs near his hips, that's painted orange. But when you look at the figure itself, it's actually left completely unpainted. So his thighs are like only painted orange halfway up and then it cuts off, which just looks pretty cheap. I'm not crazy about them cutting corners here. I mean, these figures really do need to justify their $20 price point for a lot of people because they really aren't on the same level as a Generations or Studio Series Deluxe. And I think skimping on the paint apps really doesn't help make a case for these. But of course, that's just what I think. Maybe you think he's adequate, I don't know. Then flip it over here, you just get a nice group shot of the Autobots, main characters, if you will. All right, now here are the instructions done up in that Rather unpleasant purple and yellow color scheme. I'm really not a fan of. All right, fold it out and get the instructions for transforming into his vehicle mode. Continues around to the back here. Shows you where to store his flames, which really just the same place to go in robot mode. And then shows you, you know, what part of McAdam you get and where it's placed. Speaking of McAdam, here is the piece that you get, and it is his right leg. The left was released uh, in the previous wave, so if you have the other parts, you can at least get his headless torso to stand up now. So we're getting there, you know, progress. 
And uh, just like the other leg, there's not a lot of posability here. It's just two pieces, really. You got the thigh piece, which is on a ball joint, so it can bend, swivel, all that. And then the rest of this is just molded in one solid position. Decent amount of paint on the knees and shins. Nothing else to speak of, really. So, I mean, I've given my thoughts on these previously. You know, the, the Build-A-Figure parts and, you know, how I, I think they're really cheap and nowhere near the level of Marvel's. But, I mean, at least we're getting Alchemist Prime, which, I don't know if that's a spoiler for you, you haven't been paying attention, I guess. And now here we have Hot Rod's vehicle mode. And very sleek looking, I'll give it that. Uh, has a really nice angular design to it, but it's also very plain looking. And this is unfortunate. Uh, signature flames painted on the car hood are missing. His spoiler, while present, is completely unpainted, so it just blends in with the rest of the car. So, really skimped on the paint here. Uh, his wheels have some nice paint on them, but they're also those goofy-looking snap-on wheels, the big peg right in the middle. His little exhaust pipe things, they are painted, and you can see he's got his flame effects attached, which are cool. Um, underside, pretty obvious robot kibble, but I don't really rate these things for their undercarriage. Um, biggest issue with the appearance of this being a car is the fact that his feet are just kind of hanging right off the back there. Pretty unsightly, doesn't really look like anything other than, you know, a robot kibble. So, I'm going to say overall I'm not real crazy about the vehicle mode. Uh, one thing that is neat, so these fire blast effects... They peg in via two little rectangular holes right there. You can see that's where it plugs in. So it's specialized to his his uh, form here, but they do include the little three millimeter hole. So luckily, you can still use these with other figures. So good on them for doing that. You know, they made the mistake with B of not making his fire blast effects universally compatible. So. Happy to see that this guy doesn't suffer from that. Um, it does roll actually very well, so I will give it that. No clearance issues or anything. And overall, it's it, it makes for a you know, decent looking car. It's just missing a lot of the details that his vehicle mode is supposed to have when it comes to the coloration. Now for comparison, here is the Warrior Class Hot Rod toy. And you can see that the overall design is very similar. However, those painted details that were missing on the Deluxe are present here. So you have the, the hood flames, you have the painted spoiler, he even gets this nice little yellow accent there. And overall the bot kibble is a little bit less noticeable, which is good. Uh, he's kind of got a weird front end though, so I will hit him on that, doesn't look right. Um, so you, you can see kind of how this is supposed to look, right? All they had to do was paint this, paint that. It would have been pretty much good to go. Maybe, see, so I don't know why they put the Autobot symbol here. Should be right there, and then this area should be that yellow paint. So, I mean, the mold is good. It makes for probably a better, you know, shape than the Warrior. They just really, really skipped out on that paint. And, I mean, I get that Cyberverse Deluxes aren't on the same level as, you know, Generation stuff, but, guys, <laughs> like, getting real cheap here. All right, now it's time for the transformation. So you don't have to remove the fire blast effects, but just to make it a little easier, we're going to. So get rid of those. This back part actually slides away like so. So kind of reminiscent of some older school transformers, specifically the combiner limbs, which while a neat touch, gives me concerns about how well this will hold up over time because toys with those retractable legs, they tend to lose the friction over the years that keep the legs from collapsing and they start having little stubby legs. Anyway, just go ahead and bring his feet down like so. Now we're gonna separate his shoulders from his hood section. Let's kind of bring this out like so. Now in here he has fake spoiler parts that need to rotate up and 
I want to show you that there are already significant stress marks on my copy, like right there. And I don't know why it just kind of came out of the box like that. So I don't know if it's the way they package it or what, but I've already stressed the plastic a little bit, which I'm not crazy about. Anyway, so you're going to take this, we'll, like lift it up a bit and rotate it. Then just kind of push it back down like so. Now we're going to swing his shoulders down. Like and yeah, pretty much forms the arms right there. Don't have to do much with them. And then for this last bit, you want to swing this top section all the way in. And swing his back assembly in until this hole right here kind of goes over that little plus shaped peg in the back. And that's it. That is the robot mode. Fairly simple transformation, though it does cheat quite a bit. You can see he's got a fake hood chest. And it's made really obvious by the fact that the actual hood doesn't have the flame uh, pattern on there. Also, his actual spoiler goes on the back of his legs, and this is just fake parts that flip out from underneath the top of the car. So he does cheat the transformation. Um, the upside to that is it gives you a much slimmer, more streamlined looking robot mode. So there is that. And he's kind of going the Dinobot approach where if you can't engineer it to look right, just cheat. Now, of course, our little hot rod is complete without his flame effects. So they plug in in the exact same place they did in the vehicle mode is convenient. Like I said, you don't have to remove them if you don't want to. Uh, make sure you find the spot there. There you go. You should push all the way in once you get in the slot. There we go. Now it mimics his little fire attack that he does in the show. And honestly, it looks pretty cool. So, when it comes to articulation, this guy has a ball-jointed head, which is always nice ball joints on the shoulders. He has kind of a double bend elbow, if you can call it that. So he's got a, a ball jointed elbow, and then this actually bends up too. So I guess you could call that double jointed. Uh, does, or actually does have a waist swivel, sorry, which is nice. Ball jointed hips, a high thigh swivel, that's there. Single bend knees. You have ankle tilting and rocking, which is nice. Makes him very poseable. And, oh yeah, and he's got wrist swivel too, which can go a full 360, believe it or not, even with those pipes in the way. So, overall, you know, as far as a, an action figure goes, a display piece, he's really good. Now, where he really falls short is, again, the paint operations. So he's got a spoiler. It's a completely separate spoiler from the vehicle mode one, and it is still red. It is still unpainted, which just looks so wrong. I mean, you know, the promotional art shows that it's yellow, all that, but okay then. And as I mentioned before, his upper thighs are also unpainted, and they don't match the lower halves of his thighs. And, you know, really it just... It seems like such a cop out on their part. Like it actually, it really bugs me because just it would have been yellow paint here, orange paint here, done. That's simple. And apparently, that's just not in the cards for this rather small, rather cheap figure that they want twenty bucks for. So, you know, his plastic is great. The actual physical components of the toy are spectacular. Uh, the paint is really just where they drop the ball completely. Now, of course, here is the warrior class toy in his robot mode. And you can see that his proportions are very wonky. He really doesn't look much like the TV show character. And I will say his posability for a Cyberverse warrior class is actually pretty decent. His head does turn. It's got ball jointed shoulders, hips, knee bend, all that stuff. 
but where it really suffers for the posability are his elbows. His arms are one solid piece, and that's because of his little flame attack function thing. So they just kind of little flames pop out like that, and that, that's it as far as they go. They even point forward, so stupid gimmick and waste of parts. It would have been better off just opposable arms, but yeah, whatever. That was their choice. Uh, two areas where this guy succeeds where the deluxe actually fails is one, his car hood actually becomes his chest. Now, that's a good thing as far as the integrity of the transformation. However, you can see it gives him a very, very wide chest and doesn't make him very cartoon accurate. So again, for this toy, they wanted him to look as much like the show model as possible. And so they cheated the chest transformation. Also, this guy kind of gets it right. You know, the back of his spoiler is painted yellow. Fortunately, this part isn't. So while you can see some yellow, it's still mostly red from the front side. So, yeah, I mean, it's like that paint budget is just biting us in the butt no matter what. Uh, obviously, I like the deluxe toy more. Just as a figure, he's way better looking. Much more poseable. Feels more like your classic deluxe toy. So how do I feel about this overall? Uh, really, I, I've said it all already, but just to recap, the vehicle mode is a bit lacking, especially with the feet sticking out. Robot mode is fantastic. Beautifully sculpted, very, very poseable. And I mean, just awfully dynamic looking too. I, I love what they did with his face sculpt and everything. I mean, they really nailed the show accuracy there. The only place that the robot mode suffers is the lack of paint. It bugs me. It would have been so easy just to slap a little bit of paint on a couple parts. I get they got a budget, but I mean, again, how expensive are these Cyberverse toys really to make compared to Generations or Studio Series Deluxe that cost the same amount. You know, to me, it's just it's just cutting costs and cutting corners, and it really hurts the toys look, especially the spoiler thing. It just it looks weird. It makes it look like extraneous kibble that didn't have anywhere better to go, rather than an intentional detail. So, how much do I like this guy overall? Uh, he's one of my favorite deluxes that they've put out so far. I'd say he's probably second to the Bumblebee toy. The Optimus and the Megatron were a little lacking, and Shockwave, while good, wasn't like a huge, huge upgrade from the other figures he's gotten. So I'd, I'd rate him up there as like number two. Should you pick this guy up? Uh, I mean, if you like Cyberverse, obviously, you know, you're going to want a Hot Rod. He is the best version you're going to get. Uh, Hot Rod hasn't seen too many toys compared to some other characters. You know, he's got a, he's got a warrior. He's got like a one-step. And I think he's, he's got a uh, spark armor or, or some kind of armor toy coming, but it looks kind of awful. So yeah, if you need a Cyberus Hot Rod, this is your guy right here. Especially if you want to finish building Macadam. You know, then you're just going to need to pick him up. So I would definitely recommend this toy. But... Perhaps you feel differently. Do you think I'm giving it too much praise considering everything it's lacking? Do you think they could have improved on the engineering or the sculpting of the toy? I'd love to know what you think in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know that you do want to see more content like this. If you do want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the newest Hot Rod toy from Cyberverse. And with all that said, I will see you next time.